Well, I guess that's kind of cool. See ya. Hello and welcome to the thing that everyone has been waiting for me to talk about for give or take five or six days when this comes out. Sorry about that. I know it took a long time uh, and we're going to talk about why it took a long time later, but I don't want to waste people's time because some people don't care about the fact that it took a long time. The question on everyone's mind is, what does Eclipse think about Uzu's response to his questions, number one? And number two, does it mean that I'm coming back? Well, if you saw the beginning of the video, I did it! I came back! Promise fulfilled! Now I can quit forever! No, I'm kidding. We'll, we'll get there. But regardless, uh, I want to go over everything that Uzu responded to, everything that Uzu kind of responded to but didn't, and we're just going to have a chat. We're going to have a chat. That's what we're going to do. Right, so if people missed my unhinged JoJo ramblings video, which was awful, so if you missed that, honestly, good on ya. Uh, I had five specific questions that I asked Uzuki, and I wanted him to answer them, and I said, if I'm going to come back, this is the only way that it could happen. Like, that's the only way. I need answers to these questions. And that's what I want. I want answers. I don't want fixes for the game. I don't want... Well, I mean, I, I do, but, like, you get the idea. Uh, and those questions that I asked were, where is free spec storage? Why was it paywalled for so long? Number one. Why was Tusk Act 4's infinite combo completely ignored for, like, a month? Number two. How was Anubis Pluck allowed to happen? Number three. Why were skin dupes fixed so fast, whereas game-breaking bugs were ignored? Number four. And does Uzu think the way things were back then was 100% justified, or does he regret it? Number five. So I think it's apt, rather than to just go through everything, to look at the specific responses to each of these questions, and then we'll take a look at the ones that I didn't really ask, but were still in here, and then we'll talk about the ones that are missing. First one was, where was spec storage? Why did it take so long? What the hell happened? Now Uzu's response to that, well, here we go. Now that freestyle storage is finally out, I can give some insight on why it took so long. My plan for freestyle storage at the very beginning of its reveal was to release it when there were more fighting styles in the game. However, with huge reworks to every current fighting style, I felt like it was enough because it ended up making them much stronger independently, resulting in them mattering a whole lot more in builds. Also, everyone complaining about freestyle storage helped me make the decision more easily. Well, uh, I'm glad everyone... <laughs> Being upset made some sort of an impact. Uh, at least me sitting there complaining about spec storage for, like, two years maybe made some amount of a difference. But I mean, I think that there's two things that we can take from this. The first one is, I already knew this. Um, I was told this by Paragon a good long while ago. I told you guys this in the JoJo Ramblings video, but Paragon has tried to answer a fair few of these questions. And I basically told him, this is between Uzu and I, not between you and I. And that's not meant as like a dickhead answer. That's just like, I've been talking to you playing this game of telephone between me and Uzu for a year. I just want to hear from the guy. <laughs> like, that's what that was. Um, so I already knew this, but one thing that I didn't know was, I guess, Uzu's lack of knowledge on how important fighting styles are uh, to the gameplay and how much of a difference they made back then and how nice it would have been to have style storage. Because, sure, the reworks making them more powerful independently, which admittedly I don't even really know about because I haven't played the game, uh, is, is great and all, but it was outright required to have a spec before, like when I left. If you didn't have one, you just lost. Uh, and the difference in builds between someone running boxing or Haman or vampire was huge. So I think if he thought before that it wasn't a huge deal that you couldn't swap between, you had to jump through like a hundred hoops. Like, I don't know how you could think that, but you know what? Bygones are bygones. Free spec storage is here. So whether or not the mindset sucked or not doesn't really matter uh, because, you know, we're over it. Now the next one is a bit of a combination because it has to do with Tuskak 4's Ragdoll as well as Anubis Pluck. So here we go. 
The question posed is how do OP stands even happen? The answer is as follows. First of all, the really OP stuff like that Tusk and Anubis pluck problem, exactly what I was talking about, only existed because of pure accidents or another form of unintentionalness. Tusk was genuinely a result of pure accident where it had a very long stun time that the game did not detect during its release, which it did not remove because it was literally absent. After an update, I fixed the problem with the game's stun detection, which then displayed that very long accidental Tusk stun. Anubis Pluck was the result of an intentional design, but the flaw it presented was completely unintentional. We didn't want it to be that OP at all. Every other OP moveset, like the Haman rework, I don't know about that because I didn't play it, was intentional, however, because I like to release new movesets to be slightly OP at the very minimum, so that way they're popular upon their first weeks of release, giving more people a chance to try it out which I think we can all agree is worse than being weak and underpopular. This is why the Haman rework was immediately nerfed a week after. Again, I didn't know that, I didn't play. I do want to balance the game as much as I can. Now, there were some things missing here. Uh, number one, <laughs> there wasn't really an explanation on why it took so long, which is pretty much specifically what I wanted to know. Like, I talked to developer after developer after developer about what exactly is going on here, how long would it take to fix, and I pretty much unanimously got responses from everyone that I talked to that developed Roblox games that it would take barely any time at all to just roll back or fix whatever was the problem with Tusk Act Force Infinite Combo, but nothing happened for a month, and that's where I drew the line and I was like, I can't do this anymore. Uh, <laughs> like, I'm done. Um, but as for the Anubis Pluck thing, yeah, we, we get it. It wasn't intentional. It couldn't have been intentional. But the same kind of thing goes for that as for the Tusk thing. Of course it wasn't intentional. Um, I, I can't imagine that it was. But the fact of the matter was that it was able to sit there unaddressed for like ridiculous periods of time. Um, and that's where people draw the problems. That's what people had a problem with. Not necessarily the fact that it was broken to begin with, but the fact that it was left that way for a good while. Now it sounds like maybe things are getting a little bit better considering that you mentioned yourself that the Haman rework stuff was broken and then patched a week later, which is a hell of a lot better than having to wait a month, or in the case of Anubis Pluck, a lot longer than that. Now I have a feeling a lot of people are going to take a problem with the latter half of the thing here where Uzu said that he wants to release his stuff overpowered and then nerf it later so that way people use it and surprisingly to you guys probably i imagine i actually don't see any problem with this uh, and i totally understand why that is the way it is and a lot of games do this this isn't just a uzuki yba big l moment but think about it this way if you put a bunch of time into reworking or recreating a new thing uh, and then it's just useless <laughs> and no one wants to use it or they have very little incentive to even bother trying it because they could just keep using whatever they were using before, then it was almost like a wasted effort. It'll please some people. Some people will be happy because maybe they were using it before and it got changed, now they're happy about it. But the majority of people maybe just won't care. Um, and it's like I said, it's like this for a lot of games, so I can completely understand why that is the way it is. I'm not a huge fan of that, um, personally. I get why they do it. I don't think it's I don't think it's good, but I see why they do it, um, and I don't think I have like the authority on this because it's really a matter of opinion. Next up is the skin duplication stuff and the question of why were these fixed so quickly, whereas game breaking bugs seemingly just get ignored and left there for months on end. So the question at hand: Why were skin dupes patched before overpowered stands? The answer: This is a really funny question to me because it makes me seem really suspicious. <laughs> Yes, it does, and that's why I asked it. The reason I patch skin dupes very fast is because of multiple reasons. As I mentioned previously, money is of course one of the reasons. One of his questions for context earlier was about money. We'll get there. I know I'm going out of order, but I wanted to answer all of my questions before we see the other ones. Uh, but not the biggest. I can see why people were blinded by only seeing money as the reason, and not any of the others because I did not update the game much last year. My biggest reason to patching skin dupes quicker is because I simply viewed it as a bigger problem to the game. Not only did it affect the economy severely, but it wasted the efforts of multiple people who spent a lot of time into obtaining skins legitimately. And if you ever grinded for a skin before the pity saving update, you would understand how much emphasis I am putting into a lot. 
Now imagine the rare skins during that era. I felt extremely bad for these people. Also, dupes being left unpatched over time is way worse than overpowered stands. I never once saw anyone stating this obvious reason, but dupes grow as a problem like a tumor on steroids, which also permanently affects data while overpowered stands do not. My last reason to not patching overpowered stands quickly in the past is because YB itself literally did not get updated much at all last year, which I explained in a previous Q&A on why it didn't. Go check that out. Now I'm going to be level with you here, um, and I'm just kind of going to be a dickhead. Uh, this felt like a whole lot of trying to avoid responsibility. <laughs> I don't know how else to put it. Uh, and it just seems like a clash of opinions, because I'm obviously of the opinion that stand skins mean absolutely nothing to me. I, I couldn't give less of a shit. If people are duplicating stand skins, whatever. Honestly, probably makes the game better, because people will be spamming chats less and being less obnoxious about stand skins and might actually be playing the game. Uh, whereas, obviously, the opposite is true for Uzu, who prioritizes skins over the game being functional. Uh, I could not disagree more, but I didn't put terms down on the table saying that I need to agree with every single thing that's said here, nor did I expect to agree with every single thing that's said here. Um, but I don't have much more to say on this than... No. <laughs> no. Uh, you t Stand dupes versus game being functional. Game being functional. Like, just my opinion on this one, but, uh, yeah. Now, yes, I get it. The game didn't get updated a lot last year. Um, but the point is, and as he said right at the start, it's very suspicious that the skin dupes get patched literally within like three or four days. But the game being functional is just like, ah, eh, we could leave this. It's not that huge of a deal. We'll just let this sit around for like, I don't know, give or take two months. Eh, whatever. So be it. But yeah, um, I don't agree with the mindset, but hey. I don't have to, right? And that's the answers to all of my questions, except for one. Um, and I think I can see why it wasn't answered, or maybe it was just missed. I have no idea. Uh, I'm not going to harp onto it too much, and four out of five is pretty damn good. I expected zero out of five, so uh, I'm not going to complain about that. But just putting it on record, uh, in case anyone's curious, and for Further reference for the latter half of this video, where we'll be talking about some people's reactions to this. Uh, the fifth question I asked was whether or not Uzu, like, thinks that the way things were previously were justified, or if he regrets the way things were. Um, and I feel like it's pseudo-answered. I feel like he wasn't happy with the way that things were. Um, I just get that vibe from everything that was said here. So while it wasn't directly answered, I think it was inadvertently answered, so I'm not going to draw issues with that. But there were some things in here, uh, a few, uh, that I didn't ask, but I have mentioned in videos, so I assume that's where these came from. So we're going to talk about those few things right now. The first thing was about money. Of course it was. And I didn't ask the money question, because who doesn't like money, right? But regardless, Uzu put in the Q&A, so I'll talk about it. Um, and the question he put was, does Uzu only care about the money? Uh, the answer was, money lets me update the game with more budget to pay developers, efficiency, and faster speeds, as I'd have an easier life to keep up with YBA development. I didn't think I needed to address the obvious, but of course money is one of the biggest benefactors to not just me, but for YBA's future. Also, as you can see with the most recent consistent updates of insane quality, wow, stroking some ego there. I really do enjoy working on YBA, it isn't all for the money. Um, and I think that some parts of this statement are true. Um, I, I legitimately think that Uzu enjoys what he does. I, I think I can draw a lot of parallels between myself and him sometimes which is part of the reason that I tried to throw him so many bones in the past. Like, people automatically assume nowadays that I'm, like, Resident Uzu hater number one. And there's a reason that I'm Resident Uzu hater number one, and that's because I've been trying to let, like, give them slack for years. 
<laughs> like, if you guys go back to my initial uploads, I complained about the game, but in all of the videos where I complained about the game, I specifically made a note to mention that I thought that the developers were talented and knew what they were doing and were making a great game, and I tried to throw them slack as much as possible. Like, I get that there are some people who weren't around back then, or maybe they've forgotten. If you really don't believe me, you can scroll all the way back to some of my uploads from years ago. Um, but the reason that we even got to this place was because I kind of, I hit the, <laughs> the straw that broke the camel's back where I'm like, I can't keep being forgiving of everything. I, eventually I've got to draw the line, really just for myself, I feel. Um, but regardless, the only thing that I think is kind of funny in here is <laughs> Uzu says, uh, if, I, if I get more money that I can make uh, updates faster, yada yada yada. And like when YBA was at its most popular, seemingly, it got no updates for a year. <laughs> so Uzu was raking in the dough uh, and not making any updates. <laughs> So, I don't know how much weight that holds if you're not actually using the money to put it towards updates. Uh, but evidently it is now. So, people learn, people change, and I, I don't think people just stay the same forever. I I've tried to make that clear. Um, and I, I hope that's the case here. I genuinely do. Here's the other big one, though, and that's does Uzu hate the community, and why doesn't he interact with it as much? Because I've talked about this probably a thousand times. Um, and I've given my, like, assumptions and guesses, uh, who knows how many times. But regardless, I'm glad we got an answer even if I didn't ask it. Uh, and the answer is that he's not a very social person. I said that, I think, 50 times, so I'm not surprised. I'm introverted and socially awkward, which gets worse due to also being a very easily stressed and anxious person. I'm far from perfect. Sometimes interacting with the community is very painful for me because of this. Also, I think we can all agree that a large majority of the community is very toxic, which makes it even worse. I disagree with that, but we'll get there. And that it's much worse in YBA than most other game communities. I also disagree with that. Again, we'll get there. In the beginning, I felt like that negativity was all the community was, but I realized a couple years ago that you guys aren't all bad at all. I do not hate the community, I understand that this cannot be avoided. Nowadays, I really just laugh and smile at the toxicity because it's funny to me now. On the other side, I take the positivity you guys present with a lot of care. Please continue doing that. Don't worry, I do not confuse criticism for toxicity, so please don't be shy to talk about what you think is wrong. I also think that maturing as a person has helped me a lot though, as you can see, I'm interacting much more now, and I do notice that. But I have some very, very, very large issues uh, with this statement, and it's something that I struggle with a lot. And I've put it in videos before, I've specifically addressed Uzu in videos before that I'm sure he's never seen, um, and I hope he watches this. Uzu, I hope you're watching this, because you need to hear this. As somebody who struggled with this for forever, and still does, daily, the majority of your community is not toxic. It's not. I guarantee you it isn't. I could, I would bet you hundreds of thousands of dollars. The problem is that the vocal minority is always the loudest, and they always will be. And the vocal minority will try their best to confuse you and make you think that the majority of your community is toxic. The majority of people playing your games are toxic. And there's just a bunch of assholes. It's worse here than it is over there, right? That's not the way it is. I promise you that's not the way it is. And the problem is that human beings just by nature are very, very susceptible to latching on to negative feedback and ignoring positive feedback. Think about it this way, YBA has hundreds of thousands of players playing it weekly, right? How many of those people do you truly believe are toxic dickheads? How many of them do you truly believe are out to get you or have a problem with you? And if they did, would they still be playing the game? Or would they have quit? Moreover, think about it this way. If you have a problem with something or you're upset with something, you're probably going to want to do something about it, right? That makes sense. But if you don't have a problem, if you're happy, if you're enjoying the game, you like the way that things are, 
Do you think that you're more likely to do nothing? Or do you think that you're more likely to try to express that appreciation to somebody? Because I'll tell you one thing, it is a lot easier to do nothing than to portray happiness and try to explain to somebody why something is good. So the takeaway is I can guarantee you that the majority of the community that plays YBA is not toxic. And just as a quick anecdote, because I know I'm guilty of this too. I, there's so many times you can cite like hundreds of examples in my videos where I throw shade at the audience. And that's bullshit. That's not fair. It's not fair to generalize a shitload of people into just the community or the audience because it's not just that. It's never going to be just that. Uh, and there's a lot more individuals involved here than just the community. So I hope you can do some introspection. I hope that you can struggle with this as I do rather than just give up and accept that the majority of the community is toxic because they're not. I promise you they're not. But that's my speech on that. I know that went on for a long time. I'm sorry. <laughs> I just, I feel very strongly about that. I've always felt very strongly about that. Um, I, I can't stand when I see just complete generalizations of a ton of people into just one camp. I don't think that's fair. Uh, but that's all the questions on here. And you think we're done with the video, right? <laughs> Wrong. Of course we're not. How could we be done? Because there are a few things left that we need to talk about. Of course, one of them being, am I going to play the game again? But why answer that right now when I can drag it out until the end of the video and get watch time? Yeah, that's right. I'm going there. First things first, very minor gripe, but I, I don't really understand what was going on with the wording for the Twitter post that was a response to my question. This is very clearly a nitpick, but I think you guys will see where I'm coming from because Uzu's tweet that he put out said, and I quote, I think Q&As look really fun, so I'll try it out. Today I'll be covering the ones that I was told by YBA staff to be the most controversial ones. Um, and then all of the questions in here, except for arguably two, which still have very much to do with things I am constantly talking about, have specifically have to do with me. <laughs> like, you could not watch my video and then read these and go, yeah, that's the same stuff. Uh, so I don't know exactly what the reasoning behind it, it seems like it was being masked It seemed like Uzu was hesitant to mention that the questions came from me or Maybe Paragon specifically sent Uzu these questions and said these are from the community. I don't think that happened I really don't um, but it might have uh, and it's pretty clear that Uzu knows I exist, and that's even more emphasized by the fact that in the comments of the post itself, the, at the very top of the comments is uh, someone saying, Eclipse finally got his job back, which first of all, not true. I, I mean, I, my job was going fine. I was just making less money. I'm still alive, right? I'm still here. Uh, but regardless, uh, Uzu responded to that making fun of me. So clearly he knows I exist. Um, I, I don't know what the logic here was. I, maybe the best that I could come up with was that Uzu thought that maybe people on his Twitter or in the Discord wouldn't know who I was. So if he directly addressed me, that would be bad. Or maybe he just didn't want to appeal to haters. I got nothing. I really don't know. Um, but what I will say is, if you're following Uzu on Twitter and you're in the YBA Discord, which actively has like emotes of my head <laughs> that you probably know who I am I would assume I mean I know I've been gone for four months but people don't forget that quickly I don't know it was just weird I figured I'd throw it out here because it, it was just odd to me because it seems so clearly a response to the things that I said but doesn't mention me which is fine like I'm not I'm not bothered by it it just like it seems strange and then the other thing we have to talk about is um, the fact that it's currently Wednesday when you're seeing this. It's Monday while I'm recording it. Uh, what the hell took so long? It's been five days. Eclipse, why are you avoiding us? Why are you avoiding talking about YBA? And I wasn't even going to mention this until 
uh, Gustavo here sent me a DM, um, and I went down the rabbit hole. Literally all of the clips of the recent JoJo slash Hard Watch stuff is just in a spike of DA having literally answered having clearly lines in his clear name going to his fingertips. Yeah, some people were very angry with me. Uh... So we're gonna talk about the angry people. Mostly because I think it's funny, but also because I think it's a... It's a learning moment. Because there are some people who don't understand the process. They don't understand how my YouTube channel usually runs. Um, and I think that's forgivable. I think some of the stuff these people say is forgivable because they just don't know. If you don't follow my streams, if you don't pay attention to every video I get out, then you're gonna miss some stuff, and that's fine. Um, and so I can see why some people would be confused. Uh, I'm not gonna do a big breakdown of, of these Reddit posts, because frankly, I just don't think it's worth it. Uh, but I will address very specific things that were mentioned in a bunch of different places. The first one, I want to clear up a misconception. And that misconception is that the video that I put out last week on Friday was some sort of call-out. Um, it wasn't. It had nothing to do with Roblox JoJo game creators or YBA. It was supposed to be a parody of, like, Roblox YouTube. It was a joke on how Roblox YouTubers play garbage and put out videos that say it's the best thing ever when it's trash. Um, so that was the joke. I had a lot of fun working on that video. That was the joke. Uh, why did it cause so much of a problem? Well, I know why it caused a problem, and it's kind of on me. Uh, and the reason that video came out when it did is because, believe it or not, I actually do all of my videos a week ahead of time. So, the video that you watched on Friday would have been made sometime the week prior. Why do I do this? Well, I want to make sure that if something happens to me or I can't work on videos or some otherwise, that there's still a way that I can get videos out. Great example, I had COVID a few weeks back, some people know that. And when I had COVID, I couldn't work at all. I was miserable, I couldn't do anything. But despite that, videos kept coming out because I had them done a week ahead of time. And then next week, I was able to continue working on stuff. Now, some people may ask that are extra critical, well, Eclipse, if you can get like one week all the way ahead, uh, then why aren't there more uploads? Well, it's for my work-life balance because here's my schedule for those who don't know. I wake up, I work on videos from when I wake up to 4 p.m. Then at 4 p.m. I stream from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. And then after 7 p.m. I usually just stop working and I'll go do something else. But if it's really important or I need to get a video out at a specific time, then I'm going to keep working past 7 p.m. Sometimes I won't do my streams, such as probably today. Sorry if you're some of my stream watchers and you missed Monday's stream because it didn't exist because I was working on this because it's time sensitive and I just want to get all this stuff done right now. But regardless, the point is I usually work until 7 and then that's when I'm off the clock. Uh, thing is, if I want to throw my social life down the gutter and not care, I could technically just work and work and work and work. I could get off my stream and go work on another video and get out daily videos, uh, but I would go insane, so I don't do that. But the point is, it's possible for me to get a week ahead, which is what I like to do in case something happens to me. Uh, then we can double back to this video that came out, uh, and I had no way of knowing that I was going to get a response to my questions from a video that, again, I made last week while I was making another video for the week that it was uploaded. So that's how that happened. Sorry about that if you were confused, or sorry if that made you angry, and you thought that it was some sort of roundabout way that I was avoiding talking about the issue. I wasn't. I had just already finished that video. Now, why did the video take so long? Eclipse, why didn't this video come out on Monday? Why did you upload a notoriety video that we don't like because uh, I like my free payday too? Well, uh, because I take weekends off. <laughs> because I'm a human being. I'm sorry. The short answer is that I have a life. <laughs> I don't know what else to tell you than that. On Friday, I was really busy. Uh, on Saturday, I was really busy. As some of you know, I do color guard. I had a color guard competition. It exhausted me. I was completely out of everything. And on Sunday, because of the last two days, I just, I was, I was wrapped up. I was done. I just needed a break. 
so I took Sunday off. I didn't do anything. So here we are on Monday, uh, and I'm finally getting a chance to work on this, but a video's gotta go out on Monday, so notoriety video that I worked on last week. And I'm gonna finish this one now, and I'll sort of pull things out of order and it'll go up on Wednesday because people are looking for it, obviously. But that's how that happened. I'm not avoiding talking about this. I'm not some sort of, like, Machiavellian genius that's like, well, maybe if I ignore it for long enough, then people will forget. No, that's, that's not what happened here, I'm sorry. Now, there were some other people very clearly upset uh, that specifically mentioned that I asked for the impossible, got the impossible, and then couldn't be bothered to respond. I feel like I've already answered that. I feel like I've pretty clearly covered it. Um, but I agree with you in the sense that I asked for something ridiculous. That was the point. I think people are missing the point. People seem to feel like on, on the YBA Reddit that I, feel, I felt entitled to a response to Uzu. Um, no. <laughs> I didn't feel entitled to a response to Uzu. I specifically set up something that I did not think that he would do because I wanted proof beyond a reasonable doubt that he actually, like, gave a shit and cared. Because the only way that I felt like could be portrayed that he gave a shit and cared was if he specifically went out of his way to try to not only please the community, but try to actually communicate with content creators instead of just seemingly ignoring them like he had for years and years and years. There was never a point where I was like, I'm so important that Uzu needs to respond to me. Because the expectation from my end was that he would never respond. So I don't really see how assuming that he wasn't going to respond counts as expecting a response, because I expected nothing. I don't know. Maybe I'm just missing something here. You guys could probably grill me in the comments for what I missed. I don't really get it. And the last thing that I saw a lot of was some sort of false narrative people have been spinning that I promised to play YBA if I got answers to my questions. When the fuck did I do that? What? That's... Let me give you a bit of an English lesson, alright? I said the only way that I would go back is if I got answers to my questions. I did not say, I will go back if I get answers to my questions. That's not what I said. I did not say that. You are putting words in my mouth, okay? I said the only way I would go back, not I will. Now that being said, there's two problems here. Number one is the problem of I never promised that. So. If I wanted to, if I was like the Machiavellian genius you seem to think I am, I'm like some sort of, uh, I don't know, I, I really got nothing. I'm, I'm so smart, I've got it all figured out. I'm going to ignore everything. I won't respond to Uzu's response. I won't play YBA. I've ignored everything. I've pretended it's not there. Um, like, I didn't unfulfill anything <laughs> because I never promised that. I'm not not fulfilling a promise because I never made the promise. That being said, even if I did make the promise, and this is going to be petty because people are being petty against me, so I'll be petty back. Uh, as I mentioned, I only got four out of the five, buddy. Only four out of the five questions answered, Chief. Uh, so I don't got to go back. Fuck it. No YBA. Oh, well. See ya. No, but seriously, uh, I do have to throw some shout-outs to the people on the Reddit that did not directly attack me and did their best to offend me. Uh, I saw Paragon in there. He was trying to do the same. I appreciate that. Um, and Paragon made a lot of the same claims that I did in the video. Um, most notably, the fact that, like, I don't have to do anything. I don't have to play YBA. I don't have to do any of the stuff that people are telling me I have to do. Um, but regardless, I appreciate all of you in the comment section. I was just talking a little bit ago on how I don't want to let the vocal minority uh, tear down my view. So shoutouts to you guys that were uh, actively defending me uh, because I think I sort of deserve it. I, I don't think I deserve the, the, the criticism and hate for 
my schedule not lining up and just generally having a life, but it is what it is. Uh, but I gotta answer the question. I gotta answer the big question. We've reached the end of the video. Will Eclipse return to YBA? The answer? Yeah, probably, I guess. What do you guys want to see? Like, I just... I think people thought that I was sitting here chomping at the bit, just waiting for something to happen, or I guess as some people assumed that I was like, I felt entitled to Uzu's response and I was just waiting for it to happen so I could jump back on the train and make a bunch of money. Uh, and that's, that's not what's going on here, guys. Uh, I played YBA for two years, um, and to put it bluntly, I'm just sort of burned out. Uh, I don't want to play YBA over and over and over again. I don't want to sit here and, and play YBA every day. I, I don't want to... I just don't want to have my whole life revolve around this game. Um, but I'm not totally against playing it again, especially after this, because even if I had some problems with user responses, uh, I think it is a, a good showcasing of a legitimate change. Um, it's not that I'm not skeptical. I absolutely am. Uh, I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, I think it's very strange that Uzu just seemingly had a light switch change of heart. Like, usually you don't see those sort of things. But, you know what? If that's what happened, and I've not seen anything to really say the contrary yet, so who knows, uh, then that's great. I think that's great for everyone involved. I think that's great for everyone playing. I think it's it's great for me because it really is sort of a weight lifted off my shoulders um, where I won't have people constantly harassing me. But regardless, I'm not really that invested. Um, so it's kind of on you guys. I don't have the creative motivation to go make a whole bunch of YBA videos. Uh, but if you want to see me talk about specific things or you want to see some series come back, um, then I'm open to doing that. I'm, I'm not going to just like say, la 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 la, this game sucks, I'm not going to play it. Uh, and I've been gone for a long while. A bunch of stuff has happened while I was gone. Um, and coming back will really have a bigger showcasing of, of how much has really changed when I log in and, and people have been telling me that like Soft and Wet has one shots or something and I'm like, well I don't play so I don't care, but now I might have to care. Kind of worrying. But yeah, that's the answer. The answer, will I come back? Sure. Why not? Uh, but it's... It, I just want to make it clear that it's its not going to be the way that it was before. Uh, I think a lot of people are hoping, or were hoping, or maybe were assuming that I would just go back to all YBA all the time, and I'm not going to do that. There's other games I want to talk about, um, whether it be on Roblox or off of Roblox. There's other games I want to play. Um, and I'm, I'm happy with the way, regardless of the views, I'm happy with the way things have been on my channel for the last four months. I feel like even if they've failed, I've had a chance to make some of the videos that I've wanted to make for a long time. Uh, I've wanted to make that origami video for, for a little while, and, uh, and then I did my top 10 games video, and then it was like, I really need to make this video, and I think that video is really well done, and I'm really glad I made it. Um, and I think that's what matters. I think that's what matters, is it's not always about the money. Um, and just like with Uzu, I enjoy what I do. I, I truly do. Not only do I enjoy what I do, but I seriously appreciate you guys for letting me do what I do. Because if it wasn't for you guys watching the videos, and I know, I know, cliche, everyone says that Eclipse, I know, but like, we have to. We have to say it, because it's true. There's a reason everyone says it. And the reason that everyone says it is because literally, if you weren't here watching this video right now, I wouldn't be able to be here. Um, and that's the thing that I've said about YBA, is if it wasn't for YBA, I literally wouldn't be here talking to you. I'd still be playing Tarkov to like 300 people maximum, uh, almost certainly, and coasting through college, getting a degree and who fucking knows what because I didn't care. Um, but I'm not there. I'm here. I'm here with you guys right now. And that's great. I'm really happy about that. Uh, but I, I think that's it for today's video. I know it's a bit of a mess. I know it was just literally me talking to you guys. And because of that, I have a feeling that it probably won't do super well. But who knows? Maybe you'll surprise me. Uh, but that's it. So if you enjoyed the video, then you can leave a like, subscribe, comment in the description if you've got any things that you want me to do that are YBA related, because I got nothing. Um, but, uh, I do have a few videos 
that I want to work on first, so don't expect that for like another week or two at the very most. Um, and if you didn't and you, you were upset with me, then you can dislike the video and do all that stuff. But with all that being said, have a wonderful day and night wherever you are, and I will see you guys next time.